can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There is a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for the week of December 1st, 2023. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we are stocking up on Dramamine, Pepto-Bismol, and Scotch in preparation for the fourth Republican primary debate. It's the professional left with Drip Glass and Blue Gal. I'm telling you, the ads alone for the Republican yeah. debate that are running on MSNBC, which is not our friend. Nope. Megan Kelly plus Rumble. Yeah. Plus the Freepers. Yeah. The Washington Free Beacon. Free Beacon. Yep. And and it's going to be broadcast on what? The CW? Uh-huh. And News and, Nation. And News Nation. So yeah. you're going to have to work. I'm going to have to work. I have to cover this uh, as part of my responsibility as a journalist. But um <laughs> Uh, Are, have you been asked by Brad to be on the Bradcast again oh, with it's, Digby? It's coming. I, I'm, yeah. I'm sure it's like, okay, guys, we gotta we gotta pry this stinky tomb open and stare at the rotting corpse one more time. Yeah. So yeah. let's all get in it together. But it's um, you know, that Megan Kelly ad where you just I she whips around in her dress. I expect her to do a full Sharon Stone, uh-huh. you know, just uh-huh. uncross <laughs> her legs and go, This is why you tune in. This is why they yeah. hired me. This is the only skill I have. So it'll be great. And uh, Donald Trump is, of course, going to be doing a fundraiser during that because none of this matters. Not what one matters bit of this is matters. he's running out of money. That's what matters yeah. is the entire Republican infrastructure is going broke because he's spending it. <clears throat> yeah. No, I mean, he's doing a fundraiser because this debate doesn't matter. Yeah, right. It doesn't matter at all. It's... In, to, to the Republican primary race, it does not matter. Not at um, all. We have some feedback on our show that we did last week, yeah. which you may recall was the two of us uh, with a phone between us. It was not right. scripted. We just put a phone between us. Uh, Drift Glass was feeling uh, anxiety about the future, and uh, I share some of that anxiety, but I was trying to talk him down from his anxiety. And then I said, hey, let's record this. This is a good conversation we're having. Right. So we did. Content. content, content, baby. It is content, and, <clears throat> and you know, if we could follow, uh, if if some recording device followed us around all week, yeah, that's what you do. You would get pretty much what you get on the show. I have to say, yeah. you know, we we concentrate it and edit it for your consumption, but we're talking about these things all the time. In any event, uh, we got a lot of really wonderful feedback from that episode, yeah, and I was it surprised. made our hearts feel good. So thank you for that. Uh-huh. Uh, I wanted to read um, or share with you a, a couple of the responses. First of all, KW wrote us to say, Hi, you two, listening into the pod today, still wondering what you do if Trump wins. Will yeah. you leave? We can't afford to leave. So, no, that's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Will you stay and continue fighting? The pod was a great discussion about how we've gotten here but still don't understand what you'd actually do in that oh-so-horrible scenario of a Trump win. I was really interested. I know it's dark. And yeah, it's really not about getting a gun if you stay. I, too, have wondered about a plan B and have thought about options. Part of me wants to just leave. Ugh, I'm tired. But I think my patriotic gene kicks in and says, stay and fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm tired of being a caregiver to both my husband and my parents for 12 years. I figure if I have to be a caregiver for our country, I'll do that too. Yeah. I'll continue to work in my community and with organizations to disjointedly get folks to vote blue. That's my choice. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm also thinking of plan B, climate change, let alone fascism. Lots to think about. How do we live with hope and creativity? Do we go out with gusto or with a whimper? I always remember my sharp-witted late husband answering me when I said something wasn't fair. Who told you life was fair? Yeah. And you are so correct that even if Biden wins, we still have the fascist Republicans around 
and we will not be free from their greedy, racist horribleness. However, let's get ready for the crap and face it with creativity and hope. Chop wood, carry water, I seem to remember some wise folks say on a podcast, Once Upon a Time. I don't like it when people throw my words back in my face. I hate, but... being, I hate it when people <laughs> quote me to me. It's, just... it's so true. It's madness. And yes, uh, we're right with you on your plans to stay and fight. Yeah. And she ends her note, keep talking and doing, you two. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, I got a comment from uh, someone named Jason on my blog, who I'm pretty sure I know uh, in real life from a previous life. Um, and it's always a joy to reconnect with people that you've known a long time ago. Um, anyway, this is what he had to say. Last Friday's podcast really touched a nerve. It's the existential discussion we are all having with our loved ones and with ourselves. In times like these, optimism can become a burden and pessimism is far too crippling. We're left then with realism, the only practical mindset for the fog of war we now find ourselves in. Thankfully, you and Blue Gal as a team help guide us along the path as there are indeed no maps for these territories. There aren't. This is totally undiscovered country. I'm also finding myself having the same conversation as you and Blue Gal and trying to form a worst case scenario plan. As my alignment is somewhere between chaotic good and chaotic neutral, I can vouch for this. <laughs> uh, who will I be and what will I do for the safety and survival of loved ones in the wake of the unthinkable? I guess we'll all find out when the barbarians are at the gate, but as you have pointed out, they already are. So thank you for sharing such an intimate glimpse into your personal doubt and vulnerability. And thank you to Blue Gal for having the presence of mind to capture the moment in all its raw grittiness. It would be great to hear some future episodes presented in the same manner. Yeah. My only suggestion is marry somebody smarter than you. <laughs> I I think I did that, but we'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Aww, we're adorable. Mm -hmm. uh, Joseph wrote to us finally. Mm -hmm. uh, this time is hard. I know, but do not give up hope just yet. There are ways forward that we might not have thought of yet. Even, excuse me, not even the wise can see all ends. Have you ever noticed how many problems could be prevented by including a kill switch? Yeah, I have. If you're going to create a potential <laughs> monstrosity, be sure to include a kill switch. Mm -hmm. The Krell would still be around if they had installed a kill switch in the great machine. Colossus could not take over the world if Forbin could just pull the plug. <laughs> nice science fiction <laughs> reference there. Yeah. Alas, Banana Republicans didn't incorporate a kill switch in Trump, fucking morons. Too bad. We'll have to do it the hard way, not lethal, mind you, but by total resistance. See you in the trenches. Yeah, something I have shared with all of my dear Never Trump friends on social media, just before they block me, um, is... Yeah, you built a doomsday machine with no off switch uh -huh. because you thought you could control it. That was yep. your hubris. You thought you could control it. Mm -hmm. And when it's control slipped out of your hands, as we had been warning you for decades that it eventually would, because it always does, your response was to turn to us and say, what are you going to do to fix this? Yeah. And Mitch I, McConnell's plan is Democrats will fix this. Yeah. Democrats will fix this for us. Yeah. Our Democratic friends will take care of Trump and we don't yeah. need to do anything. Right. And, you know, the the... The penultimate truth about all of these Republicans is they're just fucking lazy. Yeah. They didn't want to think about the consequences of what they were building as they were building it. And once it turned out it was a monster, they wanted to know who was going to come in and clean up their mess for them while they stood on our shoulders and bitched about how we, we, we were cleaning it up. It's exactly what they did with Obama. They destroyed the world. They got us into wars. They, they, they ran deficits. And when we finally elected somebody who would come in with a broom and clean the mess up, for eight years, all they did was bitch that he was doing it wrong, that they hated him, that he was a Kenyan, et cetera. And that's when my empathy for anything Republican ran out. Yeah. It was, you know, you could pick up a broom. <laughs> you could pick up a dustpan. You could do this yourself. But no, you decided the best policy was to stand on Obama's shoulders and jump up and down as hard as you can, try to break him as he was trying to clean up your mess. Anyway, finally, Kevin wrote, this was the best goddamn episode in years. More like this, please. Not all the time. 
thank you. And that's short and sweet. And yes, we will do more of that. It was sort of a spontaneous thing and it worked out way better than I had any, any reason to expect, but yeah, again, my wife's smarter than me. And, you know, we do have these conversations during our daily lives all the time. There's a constant back and forth, um, which now that the kids are away, only the cats can hear. So yes, right. <laughs> they're like, "All right, shut up about David Brooks already." Says Bosco. So Bosco always says that he does. Uh, we want to thank Stephen Manhattan, old school blogger, mm -hmm. uh, for reminding us of this quote: "Political satire became obsolete when Henry Kissinger was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize." Yeah, that's Tom Lehrer. Tom Lehrer. Tom Lehrer has been around a long time. That's an old quote. That's a very old. That's an quote. old quote. Mm -hmm. From a person who outlived Henry Kissinger. <laughs> yes. And, you know, it's, uh, there's not much to say about Henry Kissinger other than he was a monster and he's gone. And I'm glad he's not with us anymore. And he would have done good service to the human race by shuffling off his mortal coil about 70 years ago. Well, I, I uh, am always reminded in these kind of situations. Uh, my mother liked to paint celebrities who died on the same day or died very close together, uh -huh. uh, arriving in heaven. She did one um, of Huey, Huey Long or no, Huey Newton, the, the Huey Black Newton. Panthers, Huey yeah. Newton. Huey Newton. Okay. Yeah, not Huey, Huey Long. Newton and Diane von Furstenberg in heaven's bathroom. <laughs> and I, I thought of that this week because I thought, uh, Rosalind Carter had to go first because when Henry Kissinger gets to the pearly gates, Rosalind Carter can go, oh, hell no. no. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> we have standards here, sir. <laughs> I believe you're looking for the down escalator, the way, 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 way down escalator. Meanwhile, cats and dogs and, and, and giraffes are just ambling in right past her. Yep. Okay. Uh, left, right. No crowding. Room for everybody. But Henry, no. Henry, you get to go down where Limbaugh went. That's mm -hmm. where you get to go. We um, want to talk a little bit about journalism today, Driftland. Yeah, I want to do a, a, about ninety minutes on the history no. of journal <laughs> on the history of journalism. No. no, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. Um, but this week, I was reminded of a panel discussion. I was not a part of this, but I did attend the panel discussion. I think it was University of Chicago or UIC. I get them mixed up sometimes, and therefore both alma maters hate me, or both colleges hate me because I can't keep them apart. Uh, but it was at one of those places where you sit up on a, in a, on a on a tier of seats and you watch people talk. And one of the people that was talking was was ran the Windy City something or other. It's been a while, but I, I was part of that. I had a badge, and they did post some of my stuff I think sometimes. It was the Windy City Reader. I don't think it's the reader. I think it's the reporter. Okay, it, it's okay. sort of a. It's a blog. It's, it was very good and very funny. The guy was a, an old school newspaper journalism guy. Um, and it was, I met a bunch of local bloggers through it and it was, it was fun. It was, it was a good time. And it was this panel on journalism. And he took pains to remind everybody that, that the way journalism is done now was a very recent invention. Mm -hmm. It Journalism did not used to be this way. Journalism used to be viciously adversarial. You would have in major cities like three, four, five, six papers all fighting for readership. And the way they would get their readers is by being more outrageous and more obnoxious and more yellow than the, the other guy. In Chicago, there are people who would line their bird cages with the Chicago Tribune because it was a goddamn Republican paper. I'm not yeah. having that goddamn. Re well, you're. Your grandmother was this way? My grandmother would yeah. not have the Tribune in her no. house because it would be foul the air. Yeah, it was goddamn Republican. And you go back and, and you read the yellow journalism and the attack journalism, and it was extraordinarily partisan. And you had whole, you had labor pages, you had labor <laughs> newspapers, yeah. and they were very specifically partisan and were very specifically issue oriented. And you had the cartoons were like brutal. Man, they were, you know, Big guys in striped pants, you know, carrying sacks of money with dollar signs on them, crushing the skulls of the poor mm -hmm. was a pretty mm -hmm. standard fare for that kind of journalism. That's what it was. And that's what people wanted to read. They wanted to read that their guy was the good guy and the other guys were the bad guys. And if you want to see a movie about this, go rent His Girl Fridays someday, which is a hilariously wonderful movie and a pretty accurate representation of the sort of the 
the Wild West days of American journalism. But then came journalism school. Nothing wrong with journalism school. Medill has a wonderful, Northwestern has a wonderful journalism school. Lots of, lots of them. Columbia College teaches uh, journalism classes that are very good. But when it started to become professionalized, when you couldn't smoke or drink or swear in the newsroom, when people like Mike Royko were like the, the last dinosaurs of an ancient and, and uh, uh, special breed that used to dominate the years, used to stomp the terra. Um, then it became a corporate thing. Then it became a thing you had to have a degree or two to get into. And oftentimes you had to have an internship that, and you had to have a family that was prosperous enough to subsidize your, your internship and your education enough to get you in the door. And that's when everything became bland and centrist. And why can't both sides get along? And on and on and on. And it's been going on this way now for decades. And the end of that process, oh, yeah, adding to that the fact that there have been wave after wave of layoffs and buyouts yeah. and yeah. papers just being destroyed. Our local, you know, our local Republican rag, the State Journal Register, is all but dead. Mm -hmm. uh, bought out. It was never great to begin with, but it was bought out and gutted by Gateway Media. And it's now basically five pages of obits and sports. That's it. Well, and the only people I know that still take the paper are the people who bought it for the obituaries 20 years ago right. and still do. Right. Yeah. And I know people yeah. who who were willing to go along with it. I think we were one of them, willing to go along with it just out of, like, pity. So well, you know, support just local journalism. Support, except yeah. it's not journalism. It's just garbage. Right. And it right. didn't have to be this way and it doesn't have to be this way. But- that's what happened to journalism. Uh, so you add up all those factors, the fact that it got professionalized, that it got corporatized, and the corporations are perfectly willing to gut the place and lay people off and remind you if you still survive. There are 100 people lined up for that job of yours. So maybe you best toe the line. At the end of that long process, um, you get Chris Saliza. <laughs> you know, you get Maggie Haberman. You get Chuck Todd. You get those sorts of people succeed in that in that tide pool. But it didn't have to be that way. And the most accurate um, reflection, modern reflection of the way journalism used to be were the blogs, were the liberal yeah. blogs, were, which had people had strong opinions and they wrote about them. And some of them sucked. A lot of them sucked. But a lot of them were really good writers who were very well read and who had things to say about the state of the world and, and used the word fuck a lot. And so... Journalism isn't doesn't have to always be this way, and we hope we are carrying on the proud tradition of what it could be, and we hope it will be again. Speaking of crap journalism, Politico. Oh. <laughs> um, but this Politico, Politico article was uh, more interesting than many uh, because it showed how to actually get bipartisanship in Washington, genuine bipartisanship. And the way you do that is get senior citizens mad mm -hmm. uh, and especially get them mad enough to contact their senators. Yeah. And yep. so um, this is about Medicare Advantage, which all health care issues and government health care issues are a passion for me. Mm -hmm. um, so this article talks about a hearing that was held this past week. More than 30 million older Americans are enrolled in Medicare Advantage plans wooed by lower premiums and more benefits than traditional Medicare offers. But a bipartisan group of lawmakers is increasingly concerned that insurance companies are preying on seniors, and in some cases, denying care that would otherwise be approved by traditional Medicare. Quote, it was stunning how many times senators on both sides of the aisle kept <laughs> linking constituent problems with denying authorizations for care, mm -hmm. Senator Ron Wyden, Democrat of Oregon, said in an interview, referring to a bevy of complaints from colleagues during a recent Senate Finance Committee hearing. And I will add, he had examples of a woman who was a cancer patient getting denied coverage for blood work. I mean, very basic things going through a hassle to get approved. Getting back to the article, Congress has already gone after insurers for their celebrity-filled ads and misleading directories. But its scrutiny of these care denials 
which is expected to continue into next year, could have a far greater impact and reshape the rules for one of the most profitable parts of the insurance industry. The Improving Seniors' Timely Access to Care Act, Uh which mandates insurers quickly approve requests for routine care and respond within 24 hours to any urgent request, was reintroduced this year in the House and passed out of the House Ways and Means Committee that's, you know, in a Republican Congress. Uh-huh. This summer as part of a larger health care package. Senator James Lankford, Republican of Oklahoma, said some hospitals in his state won't take Medicare Advantage plans anymore. We can't do it because we can't afford the constant chasing from all the denials, he said. Again, that's an Oklahoma Republican talking. Mm-hmm. For the first time this year, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services is evaluating Medicare Advantage television ads before they air. Mm -hmm. Following prodding from lawmakers and numerous complaints from elderly consumers who felt duped by the ubiquitous ads. Yeah, and they were. Joe Namath told me I'd save money. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Broadway Joe, he wouldn't (laughs) lie to me. Right. Yeah. Well, right. you know, he's 78 years old. And the fact old. is, you have to be well off and incredibly healthy mm-hmm. for these plans to ensure care for you. And what yeah. happens when you get cancer and need blood work? Yeah. These are, so, this is for profit insurance. So, buyer mm-hmm. beware on those. I'm not telling anyone what to do or giving you any advice on what to buy for Medicare. I'm just uh, saying these are private insurers and, yeah. and buyer beware. And they do not have your best interest at heart. They have nope. their bottom. They have their bottom line at heart. Right, and that's all there right. is to that. As a mother and a patriot, Drift Glass, oh, yes, I feel yes, the yes. need to move on to the next topic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so yeah, I wrote a thing, and you can all go read it if you want. Uh, it's called "All Hail Liz Cheney" because that's the title of the podcast I was reviewing today, and it was all about Liz Cheney and what an awesome person Liz Cheney is. So Liz Cheney has a book and, you know, it's the first book anyone's ever written about Donald Trump. So it's very exciting. It's just goddamn exciting. I, I, there are a lot of things I do not object to about her and her book, et cetera. The, the thing I, I object to marginally as with the rest of these books is the use of terms like exposed and revealed because (laughs) You know, we're finally exposing Donald Trump for the criminal lunatic that he is. Like, no, 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 no. We already know that. And there are already 2,000 plus books written about Donald Trump, most of which already say exactly the same thing. You have some more, you know, anecdotes about Kevin McCarthy or whatever. That's fine. But you're not exposing anything. You're not revealing anything. And if you pile up the books end to end, at this point, you would literally have a mile high tower of books about Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And if you want to add yours to the top of that, that's great. Um, If you're under the the illusion that you're going to change anything or move anything, no, no, no. This is, as we said last week, this is is trench warfare now. This is a game of inches now. So you're not changing any minds with any new books or any new revelations because there's nothing left to reveal. Republicans will stay what they are. Liberals who've known about the Republican Party for decades, like, oh, my God, the Republican Party is actually full of Republicans. How shocking. And both siderists will stay both siderists. Fine. And if you want to have your friends in the recently former Republican media corporations promote your book, that's fine, too. I don't have a problem with that either. And if you want to go on MSNBC next week and be interviewed by Rachel Maddow, that's fine, too. The place where I have a really, really big problem with the people who are uh, building statues to Liz Cheney and striking medals to her <clears throat> is when they take on the progressives who object to Liz Cheney. Specifically, on the Bulwark podcast, there was an episode this week entitled All Hail Liz Cheney, and it was with MSNBC regular Tim Miller and MSNBC regular Sarah Longwell and their friend Jonathan Last. And again, all the things they talked about her doing, I don't object to. They're promoting her book, I don't object to. I very much object when they called out a progressive by name, when they said these progressives like Don Winslow, who just relentlessly attack Liz Cheney and over and over again, attack Liz Cheney just because she's pro-life. 
And no, no, that's not what she said. And they, and they know it. And then I, I jumped back a year and, and referenced uh, the exact same media corporation, the bulwark, a different podcast, Tim Miller and um, Charlie Sykes talking about what an asshole Don Winslow is. Cause he won't let it go. He won't just fall in line and agree that Liz Cheney is the greatest person who ever walked the earth. And he's obsessed with her. And he just attacks her all the time. And these progressives don't realize what a sacrifice she has made and blah, 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 blah. Because they're all bent out of shape just because she's pro-life. And, and here's the thing. That is not what she said. What she said was that Democrats are baby murdering monsters. The Democrats, the Democrat Party is uh, in favor of policies where Children can be murdered after they've left the womb, after they've been born. That Democrats are okay with murdering children after they're born. And that that is, quote unquote, pure evil. Liz Cheney didn't say that 20 years ago. She said that three years ago. She said it when she was the number three person in the Republican Party. She said it when she was praising Donald Trump and his wonderful policies. She said it, and, and the way I know this is, if you go to the House Republican YouTube channel, <laughs> the video of her saying this is still fucking there. Wow. So everyone involved in this, Tim Miller, Charlie Sykes, Sarah Longwell, the entire staff of the people over at the Bulwark, fucking well know that the problem we have with Liz Cheney is not that she's pro-life. Pro-life is a perfectly valid position to have. Our problem with her is that she used the blood libel to attack Democrats as baby murdering evil monsters. And she did it three fucking years ago as a fully grown adult who knew exactly what the hell she was doing. But these fucking cowards at the bulwark won't talk about that. Every time the subject comes up and it comes up repeatedly, they all just sort of hand wave away any objection anyone might have to what she said without ever actually mentioning what she said. It's just some disagreement over policy, some disagreement over, over, over abortion. Some, you know, uh, uh, just a mere principle difference of opinion. But these crazy progressives and their crazy ideas just keep attacking Liz, even though they, they, they like they don't realize the Constitution is at stake. And the problem is everyone at the Bulwark fucking well knows exactly what Liz Cheney said and exactly why we're mad about it. And you know what? If, if she, instead of being calling Democrats baby murdering monsters who are pure evil, if she had said, let's say, I think all homosexuals should be rounded up and put into camps because they're sodomites and they're monsters and they're destroying America. I wonder how Tim Miller would feel about that yeah, as a gay yeah. man. So, well, and I disagree with you on, you can, it's reasonable. You can have a reasonable position and be oh, quote unquote pro-life. Sure. You can. That's not what she said. At yeah. All. But I don't believe that you can be. I well, don't. You can in 2023. They, I don't they, believe that. I think you can personally believe that abortion is wrong for you. Sure, for you. And if that you... if you want to believe that, that's fine. And if you want to support adoption, that's great. You and can you believe wanna... that Pope Pius is the only true Pope. Sure. And, and go and behave and act as if for the rest of your life for yourself. Exactly. That's fine. That does not mean that you get to legislate for everyone else. Anyway. No. No, I, but I'm preaching to the choir here, but the, yeah. The point being, there is no difference in tone or intention between what Liz Cheney called me yeah. and progressives and all of us yeah. and what and Donald Trump's vermin comment. Seriously. At all. There's no yeah. difference no at difference. all. No. Nope. One, however, because it came out of Donald Trump's mouth, is the worst thing anyone ever said, and clearly a sign that he's a fascist and is a threat to America. The other one came out of someone that they want to build temples to. So they can't talk about what she actually said. They can't mm -hmm. say a mm -hmm. word. They can't say, you know what? I disagree strongly. And I thought it was out of line. I think she's a crazy person and did a lot of harm, but they can't even go that far. They can't ask her to apologize because she's never apologized for it. She's never redacted it. And that's where I have a problem because every one of these people is supposedly a savvy political professional who knows better. And I understand you know, most of what they say, I, I don't give a shit about. And I feel even a small sense of pity because they have learned the hard way mm -hmm. that everyone they've ever trusted, everyone who's ever hired them, most of their friends, 
almost all of our colleagues are actually scumbags. Yeah. And that these savvy political professionals never noticed it. Never, And they never heard us on the left warning them that this was the case. And now they're suddenly discovering that everything they know, everyone they've ever known, is actually either, at best, a grifter and a coward, and at worst, an outright fascist. Yeah. So they have no heroes left on the right to raise up as an example, as an exemplar, except, you know, Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger, which is now exactly one word. All, <laughs> and so my objection is, Liz Cheney did something, said something unforgivably evil about people like us. And I wish she would apologize for it, or I wish she'd back off of it. But what's ominous is these people won't even acknowledge what she said. They're so terrified. They're so fucking terrified of actually having to confront the fact that the problem is not Don Winslow talking about it. The problem is her saying it in the first place. Yep. And at yep. that level of, of gross dishonesty, like, why would I trust you about anything else? When you're deliberately lying about what she said and, and bagging on the people who objected to what she said, how can we possibly trust you about anything else? And that is my note about, about Liz Cheney. Now, I did have a comment that someone wrote on my blog, bless his heart. This is from a reader. And this sort of reflects a, a, a slightly different take on the matter, but I think it's kind of funny. And I thought I'd share it with you. Okay. Quote, after Trump lost the 2020 election, I started looking for some sign of a power struggle within the Republican Party. I got the idea that no one would challenge him when he was able to waltz in and push everyone off the stage and take the nomination. Then win the election when all the smart people said he couldn't win. But losing is the unforgivable Republican sin. So when Liz started complaining about Trump and working with House Democrats, I thought, aha, you can't fool me. Just replace the word democracy with the word the Republican Party and everything she says makes sense. Hmm. But if all the traction she can get is a book deal and tongue baths from the bulwark, that power struggle is over. Mm -hmm. I really thought I knew how to play this game. But if Donald Trump is the guy who takes your lunch money, you deserve to lose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, Rachel Maddow <laughs> was on the Chris Hayes podcast. Uh-huh. And I thought it was very smart of MSNBC to put that on friday night after thanksgiving mm -hmm. that was a good use of time for everybody um but one of the things she said uh sort of caught in my uh thinking um she said that the authoritarian takeover doesn't start with a person doesn't depend on the guy that's right hitler wasn't special mussolini was a shrimp the people were made ready to plug in an authoritarian. That's I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but that's, that's what she said. She was talking about how it wasn't that, Oh, Hitler arrives and he's so fantastic a speaker, which he was a, a good public speaker. Uh -huh. um, but that there was something about him that made it possible for Nazi Germany to arrive on the scene. Mm -hmm. And that was not the case that the people are made ready for authoritarian fascism. And whether it's by an economic depression, uh, a media, uh, you know, oligarchs who fund this kind of thing, um, mass media, how, whatever it is, or a combination of all those things, uh, it's not the guy. The guy is down near the bottom of the list of the things that need to be plugged in for this to happen. Right. And... So I thought that was interesting, but she didn't, at least on the Chris Hayes podcast that they showed, go into specifically mentioning Fox News and the Republican Party and how the prep work for authoritarianism helped us arrive at Trump. And all of you know about my article that I wrote in the summer of 2016 yeah. called Don't You Dare Call It Trumpism. That's right. Where... It's, you know, it's CNN, actually. It's CNN with their panel of Trump voters. And they started panels of Trump voters in 2015, not 2016. In 2015, they were running panels of Trump voters to find out what they thought about things and how things are and what they want to do and so forth. And these, this particular panel that I ran in my post, uh, Allison Camerota asking them what they think and 
all of them saying, well, Trump is saying what I'm thinking. That's right. That's exactly right. And the reason Trump is saying what you're thinking is both of you are watching Fox 24 seven. Exactly. And so he's repeating the racism, the xenophobia, the sexism, the, all of the it. stupid, stupid economic stuff, all of it. He's saying what you're, what's been forced into your brain mm -hmm. by Rupert Murdoch. Yeah. And I'm not saying that Rachel Maddow would disagree with that statement, but I wish more people would say it and, and call out Rupert Murdoch and Fox in particular, but now all of the spinoffs where all of the people who were, by the way, who were fired by Fox for sexual harassment. <laughs> I, I wrote to Hal Sparks on Twitter. I, I sent him a DM yesterday because he had, um, and this is kind of funny, MTG is a book that's being published by um, Don Jr.'s publishing house. Oh, God. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Um, and, and she is selling it. She's selling it through her website. You know, it's almost self-published. The Amazon reviews of that book are hilarious. What? There wasn't one word in this book about Magic the Gathering. <laughs> <laughs> but but the point was that Hal was making fun of, of Marjorie Taylor Greene being interviewed on Newsmax 2 yeah. to sell her book. And there was Ed Henry, formerly of Fox News, formerly White House correspondent for Fox News. That's right who was fired from Fox for sexual harassment, having a love nest in Vegas with some hostess, I guess uh -huh. is what they called her. A chippy. <laughs> and and then after that, after he was suspended for that, all of a sudden, employees at Fox d decided to mention to HR, oh, by the way, mm -hmm. you know, Ed Henry is a sexual harasser. And so he got fired, and now he's a host of a show on Newsmax too. Right. And I said to Hal Sparks, look, it's like that home Newsmax, t Newsmax and Newsmax two are like that home for pedophile priests in spotlight. <laughs> yeah. Except it's Fox news, sexual harassers. Yeah. And they're all scooped up and they get to go have a job again, whether it's uh, from Fox, actually it's from MSNBC too. Cause um, what's his name? Uh, Mark Halpern is there too. Eric Bowling has his own show there yeah. too. Yeah. Well, yeah. he's, he's the one that, you know, dick pics. Yeah. Um, no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's the dregs of the dregs. Yep. I mean, Fox news business model was originally find the um, anchors who are basically near retirement or fallen yeah. from favor or fallen out of the spotlight. And everyone vaguely remembers that Bill O'Reilly had a show. Yeah. And sort of remembers that so-and-so was a thing and hire them and put them in suits and treat them like stars. Right. And so right. they were the dregs, and the dregs of the dregs are now Newsmax. And that's where people Newsmax. go to get their fix. If they yep. can't get it from Fox, they'll go to Newsmax. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, anyway, I I got off on a tangent there. I didn't mean to. It was a beautiful tangent, though. Well, thank you. Why don't you talk tangent. about Chris Sununu? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> speaking of, speaking of, this, this is all kind of a theme today. It is a theme. Um, because there is a certain permission structure that exists inside the... Um, the Republican Party and independents, people who call themselves independents or the, the normie Republicans or the good Republicans or whatever, who are on the fence. I'm not sure what to do. I don't know what to do. And, you know, the, the regular asshole Republicans are going to vote for Donald Trump. That's just going to happen. That's that's who they are. That's programmed into their brains, et cetera. But there was always this sort of, you know, hope that enough that that 2 percent of the Republican Party could be peeled away and could be turned against the Republican Party in some way that would be just enough to get us past this area uh, in the timeline before the people on the right started dropping dead from, you know, old age and fury. However, uh, so your Never Trump friends had a sort of a lineup of people that they would refer to as, you know, the, the good guys. These are the good guys. And Chris Sununu was one of the good guys. Chris Sununu, if you haven't seen him, looks like John Goodman as Fred Flintstone. He does. Um, he just, he's, but he's a sunny, affable, good guy that the Never Trumpers could point to and say, well, at least that guy, that guy, that they didn't get that guy. There's some left. There's a few of us left. They've survived. Joe Scarborough loves having Sununu on. Oh yeah. Or yeah. You know, past tense, I hope, because, yeah. you know, like Peter Meyer, you know, that <laughs> guy, that guy, Peter Meyer, we can rely on him. 
Here is Sununu this week. Quote, if it comes down to Biden versus Trump, I'm voting for Trump, unquote. Wow. Period. So um, he did that. And many sh- tears were shed um, <laughs> on the never Trump side. And many people darkly laughed on the liberal side because we fuck. He's a fucking Republican. He's yeah. running a Republican. He's a Republican. He's from family of a Republican. He's John Sununu's kid. He's a Republican who would like a future in the Republican Party. And how did it come to pass that Chris Sununu could bring himself to say that Joe Biden is worse than Donald Trump? And the answer is, and I'm, I'm being slightly facetious here, Liz Cheney. Yeah. Liz Cheney did that. Yeah. Liz Cheney and lots of other people over the course of decades, Liz Cheney and her Democrats are pure evil, baby murdering scum. And if you're a liberal listening to this podcast, you probably lived through the Bush years when we were terrorist loving, America hating surrender monkeys. Mm-hmm. You probably lived through Barack Obama's a Kenyan usurping communist. You probably lived through uh, Bill Clinton is a drug dealing rapist who hates America. Decade after decade after decade of, of relentless, purposeful, premeditated demonization, uh, Newt Gingrich style demonization of the left to the point where Marjorie Taylor Greene can just come out and say that we're a bunch of communists, that, that, mm-hmm. that Donald Trump can call us vermin and Marxist thugs, and pledge to purge this great country of people like us, and nobody bats an eye because they all fucking talk that way, don't they? Yep. And after decades of building this doomsday machine with no off switch, Chris Sununu suddenly finds himself going, well, I'd like to be a politician. I'd like to have a job in the Republican Party. And the Republican base will not tolerate anyone telling them that Joe Biden is actually better than Donald Trump. So I kind of have to put my balls in a bag, sink them in the ocean, put my conscience where my daddy's conscience is, in a deep, dark grave where it can never be recovered again by the hand of man, and turn around and say, you know, if it comes down to Trump versus Biden, I'm voting for Trump. Peter well, Meyer- and I think, too, Chris Sununu has... Big ambitions. Sure, he does in the Republican Party. Twenty twenty eight for twenty twenty eight. He right. has big ambitions, mm-hmm. and if he were to come ag- go out against Trump now, He's people dead. would remember that. He's a dead people man. People aren't going to remember one more. I, I I'm going to use. I would use a crude word right here, but you know, somebody who kowtows to Donald Trump. Yeah, they're not going to remember that he said. Well, if it comes down to Biden versus Trump, I'll vote for Trump. Yeah. That goes in and out of Republican years. Fine. He's with the team. Right. But people will never forget if someone says, no, we will, we're going to vote for Biden over Trump. Oh, then yeah. he's, he, he ruins any presidential hopes he has for long after Trump is dead. And remember, as a traitor, all of yeah. your never Trump friends are horny to forgive anyone yep. who will say even anything remotely like this. So that, there, I mean, people who just slandered Chris Christie, not slandered because it was all true, but who just just bagged on him for being Donald Trump's sock puppet and endorsing him and backing him in the debates and coaching him and nearly dying from COVID because Donald Trump coughed on him and still backing the man were like, oh, my God, Chris is up there doing the, the, he's doing the thing. He's saying all the things. It's great. And as we talked about on this podcast, probably six months ago or three months ago, time is a flat circle. I don't know. It's yeah, all the all the Chris Christie comments about Donald Trump that were edited for television by CBS are all about Donald Trump being awful Mm -hmm. and Barack Obama being equally to blame for everything. Right. And Joe Biden being pretty bad and awful, too. So the best you can do if you're Chris Christie is blame both sides. The very mm-hmm. best. And you you can rely on your friends on the Never Trump team to just edit out the part where we talk about Obama being just as bad and Biden being just as bad and just say, did you hear what he said about Trump? It was mean. Let's mm-hmm. give this guy a f- his 15th mulligan because, yeah. because they have nobody else. There's nobody left on the right for them to build a party out of other than the scum of the earth. So they're going to start lowering their standards and lowering their standards to the point where Anybody who's ever said anything mean about Donald Trump can clear the bar for those people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For the rest of the party, 
anyone who's ever said anything mean about Donald Trump and can't find a way to to fudge it is dead to them. Mm -hmm. And that's what it means to run in the Republican Party these days. Yep. Uh, Everywhere uh, across the whole country. This is not local. It's not just in in one state or another or in Texas or wherever. This is the whole Republican Party. And that's who they are. And that's where they are. Now, there's one more thing before we go. We have new holiday cards, and we'll be sending them out to our donors this year. This year, they will have an election theme that we know, or at least hope, you will enjoy. Driftglass designed these. I think they're funny. Mm -hmm. Uh, We will be printing out the mailing labels next week. That's right. So, if you'd like to be on the nice list, (laughs) if you want one, it's time to stop procrastinating and become a Patreon for five bucks or more a month, or give a one-time donation or recurring donation at our PayPal. Details are available at proleftpod.com, and we thank you for that. And you know what we're not doing on this podcast? Because I listen to a lot of podcasts. We're not doing live reads for hangover remedies, or or dick pills, or real estate, or special butter. French or, press coffee makers. No, no, nope. no. We could we we could do those. We have an extensive list of fake sponsors who've been ignored all year long. <laughs> but you know what? To quote Elon Musk, "Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> fuck our advertisers. Fuck our advertisers. <laughs> fuck them. Look, if we have if, no advertisers, if if freshly poor does not want to pay us money, they cannot blackmail us. Fuck them. <laughs> and if technically it's a salad." Thinks they can hold it over our heads? Well, fuck them too. <laughs> yeah, that's so. So basically, any any support we get for this podcast, anything, any revenue we get from this podcast, come from donations. We don't do advertising. Right. We don't sell your mailing list. We don't do live reads during it. it uh, we hope to God nobody's inserting commercials on the YouTube version of this. Occam's just, Razor, just, fuck you. Yeah, yeah. Oc- oh yeah, I forgot Occam's Razor. We should, <laughs> you know, our end of the year show is just going to be me reading ad copy from. Our no, Facebook we did podcast. that April Fool's Day. Remember? Oh, that's right. Oh yeah, yeah. It's April- already been done, Drift Glass. God damn, we've done everything. We've anyway, done anyway. No, we haven't done everything yet. No, we haven't done episode seven sixty one, which that's is next right. week. That's right. Yeah. That's next week. You want to do a news roundup? I do. All right. Go the President it. Bidening continues. Mm-hmm. Trump and his zombie mob are now attacking Judge Engeron's wife because of tweets she didn't even post from an account she doesn't even have. Yeah, isn't that great? So the New York State Supreme Court Appellate Division has reinstated Judge Engeron's dual gag orders on Donald Trump. NPR reported that House Speaker Mike Johnson has ties to the New Apostolic Reformation, an extreme far-right Christian movement seeking to dissolve the U.S.'s separation between church and state by, quote, any means necessary. Yup. Also, according to a CNN review of his prior statements, this same Mike Johnson voiced support for revisiting the Supreme Court decisions that struck down restrictions on the use of contraception, barred bans on gay sex, and legalized same-sex marriages. They're coming for the whole thing. Guess who said this? Quote, I've laid waste to the left in my state. I've laid waste to the Democratic Party. They are a carcass on the side of the road. Unquote. Yeah. It was Ron DeSantis. Yeah. Do you remember Ron DeSantis, Drift Glass? Yeah. The last time you're ever going to get to see him is next Wednesday on a Republican debate. And then <laughs> that, that man has spent... Over a hundred million dollars to come in That's last. That's like Giuliani presidential campaign money. I, I know, and everything he has tried, everything his super PAC has tried, has blown up in his face. Yeah. Everything, and yeah. one of the reasons it's blown up in his face is the super PAC is too much like him. Yeah. So you see an ad that they did that is technically not you know coordinated with him, and everyone goes, "Oh, that's a DeSantis ad. Fuck that guy." So yeah. you know, yeah. if you, if you want to set fire to a pile of a hundred million dollars, I got a lot of different ways you could do that, but. You know, he has ambitions and his wife has big ambitions. Anyway, she sure does. Stephen Miller has said that journalists at Media Matters should be jailed for their disputes with Elon Musk. And Musk and the AG of Missouri think that this is something worth looking into. Youngest child moved to Missouri because there's more to protest there. And she's right. 
Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton is opening an investigation into media matters for potential fraudulent activity after Elon Musk accused the left-wing media watchdog group of manipulating data on his social media platform. Yeah. This is great advertising for Media Matters. It is. And, I hope it, and they are, their feathers are not ruffled by this. No, I hope they have really good lawyers and plenty of a legal defense fund that's, that's healthy. By the way, uh, today was the day that they're reopening the weaponization Twitter files thingy oh, uh, yeah. in Congress. So you and I, after this podcast is over, we're going to watch uh, Matt Taibbi sweat oh, no, on television. No, we're not. No, we're not. We're really, really going to hot. I'm not. We're going to have dinner and watch a rerun of, of uh, Mission Impossible. Mission Impossible. Mission Impossible. <laughs> Univision anchor Jorge Ramos says his network's friendly interview with Trump, quote, put in doubt the independence of our news department. We cannot offer Trump an open microphone to broadcast his falsehoods and conspiracy theories, unquote, except, yeah, you kind of did. You kind of already did it. Yep. Now, since we skipped this last week, we're going to remind everyone that Jason Chaffetz quit Congress when Trump was elected president, he got out of there because uh-huh. he'd helped elect him mm-hmm. by lying about Hillary Clinton. Uh, but last week he went on Fox News where he has his, his new job to tell everyone we went to go buy a turkey today. It was $90. Uh-huh. It's all a choice by Joe Biden. Joe Biden. And of course, he had bought a high end organic turkey from a farm in California and bought it in Utah. Uh-huh. Where, yeah, it's going to cost you. Um, But according to the USDA and Fox's own affiliate, turkey prices have dropped to $1.27 a pound this year. Uh If you buy a frozen turkey like everybody else. Like ordinary human beings. Yep. That's right. Uh, This is Senator John Foghorn Leghorn Kennedy talking about the Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris. When her IQ gets to 75, she should sell. Racist asshole. Uh, The same garbage person got his ass handed to him on live TV when he made a crack about Chicago being, quote, America's largest outdoor shooting range, unquote. And Dr. Megan Rainey of the Yale School of Public Health corrected him again on live television, quote, actually, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Missouri actually have higher firearm death rates, unquote. That did not make Senator Kennedy happy. And that makes me scared because youngest child, again, went to Missouri. Went to Missouri. Yep. Because there's more to protest there. Yep. Well, her heart's in the right place. Mm-hmm. The Eighth Circuit has gutted the last remnants of the Voting Rights Act, ruling that only the government can bring challenges under Section 2. Now, this may go to the full court. Yeah. Um, But... Their decision, if it stands, means that in a fu- in a future GOP administration, with the Department of Justice out of the picture, private parties can't bring challenges to voter suppression. They have a plan, and they're working the plan. Uh, MSNBC has canceled Mehdi Hassan's show. Instead, it will debut a new politics-focused ensemble program to which we were not invited. Drift Class has a little chip on his shoulder about that. Uh, you know what? Invite anybody. Invite Digby. Have, have she doesn't Brad. want to be on TV. Yeah, I don't care. You know, your yeah, country somebody, needs you. An actual liberal is what yeah. you're saying. And act, put an actual liberal or ten on on television to talk about things that people like us would like to see. On it's not going to happen. I know it's not going to happen. So do you? But I can dream, can I? They can't sure. take that away from me. Americans can order another round of four free COVID nineteen tests for home delivery. Get yours at covidtest.gov. That's COVID tests plural. Dot co- gov. The U.S. Postal Service will deliver them for free. The Biden administration is also making free COVID tests available to schools. Yeah. Excellent news. Fox host Maria Bartiromo has invented an entirely new COVID lie that COVID was intentionally sent to the United States. She also suggested that a four-year-old hostage was only released by Hamas because her parents bought a painting by a Hunter Biden as if that made any sense at all. Yeah. And then she said, well, no, it's that Biden negotiated for her release because the parents bought a Hunter Biden painting. Okay. So he, they, he was bribed to get a four-year-old away from Hamas. By, by buying a painting. 
because that's what the the and you know she's just a special kind of despicable and crazy and crazy and yeah. she's costing Fox money and yeah. it's a decision to keep her on the air yeah and they're making that decision yes they are a jury has found America's largest egg producers and industry groups illegally rigged the market to drive up the price of eggs. Uh, so this was a Joe Biden conspiracy, right? Joe Biden no. is and, the and the way the... they found it out was interesting. It's it's manufacturers of baked goods uh-huh. suing <laughs> the egg manufacturers. Uh huh. The price fixing scheme included exporting millions of eggs overseas to drive up U.S. prices around Thanksgiving and Easter. So. And Joe. I don't, I can't imagine Fox covering, you know, that they actually got caught price fixing when the price of eggs was the Easter story for weeks and weeks on no, Fox. The, the real story is Joe Biden is the egg man. He's so, the egg, I, he is the uh, egg man. Uh, leaders of Moms for Liberty, I'm sorry, singular, the leader of Moms for Liberty is a convicted sex offender. Philip Fisher Jr., a pastor and Republican ward leader, Coordinating faith-based outreach for Philadelphia's Moms for Liberty chapter is also a staunch Trump supporter, a black conservative who has compared Barack Obama to Hitler, and a registered sex offender with a 2012 felony conviction for aggravated sexual abuse of a 14-year-old boy when Fisher was 25. But wait, there's more, Drift Glass. There's always more, Blue More Gal. about Moms for Liberty. Mm-hmm. The Florida Center for Government Accountability, which Ron DeSantis has not left as a carcass on the side of the road, at least not yet, notes that Florida GOP chair, the chairman of the Florida Republican Party, Christian Ziegler, Uh he is husband of Moms for Liberty co-founder and has been accused of sexual battery by an alleged menage a trois lover of his and his wife's. Yeah. According to sources close to the investigation, a woman has alleged that she and both Zieglers had been involved in a long-standing consensual three-way sexual relationship prior to the incident. The incident under investigation by Sarasota police occurred when Christian Ziegler and the woman were alone at the woman's house without Bridget Ziegler present, the sources conveyed. Naughty, naughty. Why can't you be more sex positive, Drift Class? I know. I'm just, (laughs) I'm a bad person. Sources also corroborated that a search warrant was executed on Christian Ziegler's cell phone and that investigators continue to conduct a forensic examination of the electronic device. Christian Ziegler is also alleged to have secretly videotaped the sexual encounters between the couple and the woman. Sources said... I don't think you need a forensic examination. Don't you just click on photos and it brings up all the videos? I think so. I'm not big with the technology, but I will (laughs) say this. This fifth season of Fargo is lit, Blue Gal. (laughs) It is. Absolutely. This is good. It's a good, good season. Yeah. Everybody should watch Fargo. Yeah. No, we are not making judgments about the sexual mores of anyone else. We are pointing out. Except Florida Republicans. Except Florida Republicans. (laughs) who are super duper Christian and want to drive us degenerate liberals out of their state. And, and ban uh, books because and ban they no. might lead people to have bad sex thoughts. Right. Bad sex thoughts and bad race thoughts. And we can't have that. Yeah, Right. Uh, and of course, there's a little bit more. After being swept by Democrats, a Pennsylvania school board backed by, wait for it, Moms for Liberty approved a $700,000 exit deal for a superintendent who backed their book bans, and other far-right policies. There's always money. There's just an infinite amount of money on the right. Infinite amount of money. But this is the taxpayers paying for him to leave. Sure, but it's their money. They can yeah. just vote to take the money. They just and voted give it to, to give it to give it yeah. to him. It's our money. It's all ours. Mm-hmm. U.S. Senator Mike Lee, Republican of Utah, defended his role in the January 6th conspiracy. Get this. By claiming that he was actually secretly investigating the plot rather than assisting it. He's a a super secret double agent, Mike Lee is. Yes, he is. Uh, Fox News correspondent Lucas Tomlinson, we should make him famous, reported that Joe Biden, quote, continues to face questions about his age, even here in Nantucket, unquote, citing nothing more than a question Lucas Tomlinson himself 
had shouted at Biden on Saturday. And Fox ran the video of him shouting it and didn't note on the air that it was him shouting it. Yeah. It, it, now it's a Monty Python sketch. It is. You it know, is. with 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 Hilter on the balcony. Yes. And one of Hilter's guys in the audience of two people going, he's right, you know. I mean, really. <laughs> And, and of course, the, the audience who watch Fox News are stupid enough, are cow dumb enough to believe all of this stuff because that's that's who they are. Nikki Haley, speaking out loud again, said any candidate that tells you they're not going to go after Social Security and Medicare is not being serious. Oh, Nikki, that's why they love you. That's why that's, the Cokes love you. That's why the, the elite class loves you. <clears throat> yeah. And speaking of crazy people talking out loud about public policy, Donald Trump doubled down on his calls to repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act if he is elected president again, without offering any details about what his alternative (laughs) health care plan might be again. All we know about it is it'll be ready in two weeks. That's all anyone knows about it. He promised, quote, much better health care than Obamacare for the American people, adding Obamacare sucks, unquote. So... We're going to have ads, <clears throat> and this is something that Biden has picked up on. Yep. We're going to have ads about t- aimed directly at the 26 and under crowd. Yep. Do you like being on your parents' insurance? Yep. Trump wants to take that away from you. Now, it, it's it's hard to, to understand. It's hard to remember sometimes. There's still 11 months until the election. Right. And a right. lot can happen in 11 months. So It can. It can, <clears throat> and I I appreciate, frankly, mm-hmm. that the Biden campaign is saving their fire right. for when the attention span of the vast majority of Americans is actually focused on voting. Well, and I I am agree with all of that except for the attention span part because the only people who are persuadable at this point are about eleven people. Yeah. Who are who are straddling the fence going, I don't know, Chris Sununu makes a lot of sense, you know? <laughs> and you gotta blast those people with twenty two hundred million dollars in ads going and, and have their kids say, Mom, you're not voting for Trump, are you? Because I really want to stay on your insurance. And you know, if you vote for Trump, I'm off They'll your take insurance. Take that away from me. And then you have to pay for my insurance, mom. mom. So yeah. like you pay for my car insurance, mom. Mm-hmm. No, uh, my prediction, frankly, I know this is early and I'm, it's always dangerous to do this. I think the pundits are going to be very surprised how many Republicans stay home next November. That's that's the key. That is the key. Yeah. Stay home. They're I embarrassed can't. or they don't want responsibility and they can't vote for Biden because he's the he's Satan's spawn. But right. I don't have a choice on the ballot, so I'm just going to stay home. Right. And if there's any of the 40 people running third party. Yeah. Which, you know, is just a nightmare scenario. Hopefully, if they don't stay home, the Republicans will toddle onto the polls, uh, toddle to the poll and throw their vote after. Well, actually, the uh, I don't believe I have it in our notes here. The uh, the good people at, at No Labels oh, have decided yeah, to go news. virtual. Yeah, they're not going to have their convention in Dallas anymore. Yeah. They're going to do it, do their choice virtually. Yeah, which is going to be is awesome. So I'm looking forward to a um, no labels unity ticket of the Pute Kateke and uh, Bodie McBoatface. I think that'll oh, be Bodie great. Bodie McBoatface and the John Oliver bird from yeah. from New Zealand. Yeah, because that's they weren't sketchy enough and weird enough and clearly a Trump stalking horse enough. So yeah. let's not even have a convention. Let's just have people, our members, vote virtually where there's no oversight at all about what we're going to do with this thing. Yep. Great. Great news. About 90 House Republicans plan to support the vote to expel George Santos from Congress following the release of a House Ethics Committee report, which found substantial evidence that he knowingly filed false campaign finance statements and used campaign funds to pay for personal expenses, including rent, trips, luxury items, cosmetic treatments like Botox, and a subscription to a porn website. On the other hand, super duper Christian House Speaker Mike Johnson said, I have real reservations about the motion to expel the embattled New York Republican. Yeah. If he can get out of jail, he'll have a hell of a reality show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He'll get straight to Bravo. But he might be be in jail for a really long time instead. Yeah. Well, maybe he can do a reality show from in jail, like scared straight, you know. 
George Santos scared straight. Don't make the mistake I made, kids. <laughs> Don't use campaign <laughs> funds to buy porn, okay? Because it doesn't matter if you're friends with super duper Christian Mike Johnson. You'll end up in the who's gal. See, now I'm doing Fargo. See, I'm watching Fargo this week. We're watching I'm Fargo. Up... Okay. All right. Moving let me, on. Let me... You want me to do this in my Minnesota accent? No. Because no. this is Colorado story. Oh, this is my favorite story. This is my favorite story all week. Joe Biden, my president and yours, criticized Lauren Boebert in her own district because he's campaigning in her district as, quote, one of the leaders of this extreme MAGA movement, unquote, following a tour of a wind tower manufacturer in Pueblo, Colorado. Beautiful town. Biden mocked Boebert for voting against the Inflation Reduction Act, saying, quote, she, along with every single Republican colleague, voted against the law that made these investments and jobs possible. And that's not hyperbole. That's a fact, unquote. Boebert has repeatedly claimed the Inflation Reduction Act is, quote, dangerous for America, unquote, and that Biden's climate policies are a massive failure. CS Wind, however, is currently undergoing a $200 million expansion that is expected to create 850 jobs by 2026 with help from the tax benefits in Biden's inflation reduction law. The factory is the largest of its kind in the world. Quote, did you all know that you're part of a massive failure? Biden <laughs> said to workers and local officials at CS Wind, no, that sounds like a massive failure to me. How about you? Just kicking her when she's down yep that's and that's she's gonna lose her seat by the yeah, way i think i think i really think she is i think she's gone here's my favorite story of the week oh, oh, oh. <laughs> hunter biden offered to testify publicly before the house oversight committee in response to a republican subpoena saying it's his lawyer said in a letter we have seen you use closed door sessions to manipulate even distort the facts and misinform the public we therefore propose opening the door but House Oversight Chairman James Comer went whining to Newsmax that this was all somehow so unfair. Mm -hmm. Breaking news, James Comer lost cat turd on this one. Oh, my God. Donald Trump's favorite Twitter account, cat turd, said he would interview Hunter Biden on TV since Comer was such a coward. And he's the best they have. He's the man. Cat turd is the leading spokesperson for right. MAGA. And James, Com turd. James Comer is the guy they put in charge of this most important hearing in the history of the United States government. And yep. he has he has gone to the rake shop to buy more rakes to step on. Yep. And he just keeps fucking up and then running onto Newsmax where they wipe his ass and let him cry. Right. And, it's, and, it's, and let him lie. And, and lie. that's what all he wants yeah. is content for Newsmax to run to Newsmax and say Hunter Biden said and lie about it right. and that's, try the Biden administration on Newsmax. That's right. it. That, that's all they want. This is yeah. nothing but a variation on what they did to Clinton. Oh, it's Benghazi, Solyndra. Yeah. Well, it's, you it's, name the, it. yep. it's the tan it's, suit. It's blowing in a call to the Ukraine government and asking them just start an investigation. Yeah. And then and me we'll and my take friends, it from there. We'll take yeah. it from there. It's, it's that strategy. Wagging it's, the it's, dog all yeah. the time. Yep. That's all they've got. At the and other it's worked. It's worked for decades. Oh, it has. And I think there's finally a cadre of Democratic House members who get it. Yeah. That that we're going to undo this by providing television content uh -huh. that shows what liars you are. Yeah. And, and, and frankly, we have Hillary Clinton to thank for this lesson. I know. Because I know. going on television for 11 hours of testimony uh -huh. broke them. Well, they won. They won, but this broke this trial by congressional investigation. Yeah. You put prosecutors on the committee who are exactly. Democrats who will That's make noise. That's the thing. And they learn to punch back. They learn to punch they back punch hard. punch back, yeah. And they learn to go to their network, go to MSNBC or yeah. CNN, and talk about what liars these people are. Yep. In yep. blunt, clear terms. And mm -hmm. again, the both siders are like, I don't know, Chris Sununu is making a lot of sense, but you know, I'm glad to see that somebody learned something over the yeah. last 30 no, years. No, I think they did. I think they did. Now, speaking to people who haven't learned a goddamn thing, the political arm of the Koch Brothers Network endorsed Nikki Haley for the 2024 Republican nomination. Americans for Prosperity Action, because they only have nine words and they use them and mix them and match them for every <laughs> one of their little programs, said it believes that nearly 75% of Republican voters are ready to move on from Trump. 
despite the fact that Trump has a commanding lead in the race for the GOP nomination in virtually every poll, with less than two months until the Iowa caucuses. The thing the Koch brothers, or Koch brother, since one of them's already dead, forgets. Uh, well, not forgets. They do not understand their own political party. They yeah. really don't. And they yeah. have enough money to insulate themselves from any knowledge of what's really going on. So what they don't realize, what they refuse to accept is that their policies, tax cuts for billionaires, deregulation, um, lots more immigration, foreign policy, they, the people who actually vote in Republican primaries hate you. They fucking hate you. You are Jeb Bush. Everything you stand for is everything they despise. And the worst thing you can do for Nikki Haley is to put your arm around her and say, this is our gal. This is who you, this is who the Koch brothers want. If you want to make Republican voters really, really despise her beyond the point where they despise her now, just put the Koch brand around her neck and watch her sink like a stone. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitty is a dog named Tank. And Tank is cute, and you should go and visit Tank. And of course, Tank eats freshly poured pet food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store direct, your dog or cat or whatever will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. And you can visit Tank at our Facebook page or website, cutie, cutie, cutie. Yeah. And you can send your internet kitty dog or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write to us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write to us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! letter on the air unless you say otherwise do not forget our gourmet coffee guidelines if you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself buy one for us this is not charity this is our job if you can spare five bucks a month please spare five bucks a month at patreon.com forward slash pro left pod and please share our show on social media and if you love this podcast please force someone else to listen to it too don't take no for an answer. Make them listen to it. Sit with them until they say, fine, fine, I'll subscribe, and then move on to the next person. And thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? The Internet Kitties really hope the coming year is free of announcements of righteous, right-wing, Christian, patriotic, Republican three ways. Amen. Amen. Hey, let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the humping and the popping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow and the switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. A professional left podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2023 DGBG Productions.